as you probably guessed it, we're almost there. With two episodes away, and this is episode 25 of the movie reviews. I'm almost there. You know, I, I cannot believe I'm doing this. I'm really excited to do this movie review because it's the continuation of the 20 through 11 favorite Disney movies of all time. Now, before I start or the, uh, the review, I'll do a quick recap on the Disney movies. He's that I review, and I'll recap the other ones coming real soon. All right. To start things off, number 20 was Moana, 19, Frozen, 18, The Jungle Book, 17, The Incredibles, 16, Peter Pan, 15, Coco, 14, Inside Out, 13, Dumbo, and number 12, which is this movie, and you probably guessed the movie of the logo on the thumbnail, it is none other than Sleeping Beauty. Okay, yes, I really enjoy Sleeping Beauty so much. I'm not too sure about the Maleficent movie. Yeah, I don't really like it that often. Like I said, I prefer the classics more than the remakes and the Maleficent movie. Um, it's not really a great one in my opinion. And no, I didn't watch the uh, sequel for it. I thought it was going to be better than ever. But yeah, anyway... Sleeping Beauty is episode 25 of the movie review list. Okay, now before I start this, if you're one of the, those people who uh, watched some of the modern day ones, like from 1990 through 2020, if you're one of those guys who uh, saw the modern day Disney ones, and if you haven't seen the classics, then go on ahead unpause me then go watch it either on Disney Plus or if you own, own it in front of VHS or some or DVD you can check it out there or if you're into spoilers go on right ahead I don't mind <laughs> okay anyway I'm really excited to do this <laughs> so and probably guessed it, Sleeping Beauty is at number 12 of the list. Because I really love, like the storyline so much. That's why I decided to pick this one on number 12. <laughs> yep. Anyway, it starts off with the Queen and King in his first birth, which is Princess Aurora. Yep. And since the birth, you know, birth has come. The ones who came in were royal knights of kingdom. Those who uh, see the newborn or child of the king and queen. Which uh, the king came from another kingdom along with his son, Prince Philip. Were the one who was blessed to get married. But here is another surprising thing. There were three fairies who came along, along to the party of their firstborn. Okay. Now don't think, don't sound lazy. Right at the, the movie, I kind of forgot their names, but that's okay. Hey, so uh, I'll be calling them the fairy. He's because uh, they are fairies. But anyway, they all had a special gifts for the new baby princess. But right after the blue one was about to grant in Aurora their her gift, something monstrous came in. It was. The best Disney villain of all, Maleficent. Ooh, that means that something bad might happen. Right after her uh, Maleficent didn't got an invitation, she decided to uh, plant a gift on Aurora. She said that on the sunsets of her 16th birthday, Aurora will prick her finger on the spindle of the spinning wheel, and when that happens, she'll die. Which uh, everyone but shot. Locked and uh, they were trying to go after her, but Maleficent disappeared right out of thin air. Uh oh, what could that mean? Well, right after that scene, the last fairy had granted her a gift. 
The only way that could break the curse is by True Love's kiss. That would happen on her 16th birthday. But, ever since the curse, curse catastrophe, the king did, had decreed to uh, burn down the step, on the spindle of the spinning, <laughs> the spinning wheel, so that way uh, Aurora couldn't touch them. But the fairies were trying to figure out how to uh, prevent the cur curse that Maleficent put on Aurora. Uh, but uh, the fairies decided something. They decided to uh, take Aurora. Her with her so that way they could keep her safe from Maleficent and also of course hide their magic power so that way Maleficent and couldn't spot them which uh the king and queen accepted as the day on, you know, on her 16th birthday they would return her and the curse would be over <laughs> so with that being said they decided to take her but after that that 16 Years later, Maleficent grew furious as she was trying to search everywhere for Maleficent so that way the curse would come true and she would seize victory. But here's the thing, she sent her pet crow to uh, find them. So with that being said, the uh, baby, Aurora or Rose as they call all did was now a scullery maid who were helping them out, but their hands were uh, trying to prepare for Aurora's 16th birthday, which uh, they want to surprise Aurora. So with that being said, they sent Aurora out to find some more berries, so that way they can uh, spend some more time. I'm getting ready, like a, a perfect birthday dress and a birthday cake. So when Aurora started searching around, she was told she couldn't talk to strangers, but she said that she met a handsome print in her once upon a dream. <laughs> so she started to sing the song, and while that uh, she was singing, Prince Philip also grew older, and while he was riding down with his steed, he heard, heard a voice which uh, he tried to follow it, but then uh, ended up falling down to the lake. <laughs> well, after that scene, there are fairies were were still trying to get everything ready, and they uh, still remember a time when Aurora was 16, and they had the greatest 16 years of their li lives with Rose, and they were, ha were happy, even though if the curse does break. <laughs> so, right after that scene, the... Uh, Aurora's animal friends found something. It was the uh, the red and cape, even a hat and and shoes from Prince Philip when he fell off into the lake, which uh, he did stole. So that way they could show up of Aurora's dream prince, <laughs> and she was so happy for dancing around until Aurora met Philip. Which he didn't know she was a prince, but ever since he heard the song, they started dancing with each other, with each other. <laughs> but then, uh, after that, Aurora kind of ran out because uh, she couldn't tell well, her name. But they said they would meet each other again. But right after that scene, they now return the fairies trying to finish up everything. But the blue fairy decided to uh, use their magic, but uh. They had to close everything up so that way they wouldn't get spied by Maleficent. So with that being said, they used their wands to uh, fix up the dress, make the cake look better, and clean up the room before Aurora arrives. And then, when Aurora arrived, she saw the dress and the cake, and it was perfect. Which uh, then leads to this. Aurora met someone that uh, she was hoping to meet someday. But then uh, the fairies decide it was time to tell her that Aurora is actually the princess and someday she has to marry a prince which makes Aurora feel upset and that she doesn't know if she's right for this. So with that being said, then she had to uh, accept her choice of uh, going back to where she belongs. <laughs> and speaking of which, it brings up to the scene where... 
two kings were discussing about the future of Fr Prince Philip and Aurora, right, where the, they'll have be married and having grandkids. And then uh, they kind of uh, sing up uh, uh, the cheers thing, then uh, kind of fight, but then got along again. It was actually a pretty funny one, except for the one that uh, they're. Uh, I don't want to talk about it because it doesn't feel appropriate though, but yeah, you know what I mean, right? But then after that, Prince Philip has returned with some special news saying that uh, he found a someone that he wants to marry, but it wasn't a princess, it was a pheasant, a peasant, which kind of upset his father a little bit because uh, he said he's supposed to marry a princess or else the royal family would go down. Oof, major stuff. But then right after that, not though, it was time. The fairies, along with Aurora, were coming into the town. Aurora, were, uh, she was ready to meet her parents. But Aurora is still you know, pretty upset about what happened. And so she you know, cried in shame. But then uh, when the fairies left, uh-oh. Something mysterious came out of the fireplace, which caused Aurora to hypnotize and to follow it, which the fairies tried to follow it to stop her, but something dastardly was right in front of her when she saw the spindle of the spinning wheel. It when one moment she put her finger in it, and then... She fell asleep in death. With that being said, Maleficent took her victory, which made the uh, fairy sad after them that they were too late. But what the king of didn't know is that they didn't saw it happen. They thought the uh, curse was over. So with that being said, they put all the kingdom um, of Aurora's kingdom asleep in order to uh, see either a fault Oh, and daughter. But, right after they fall asleep, they heard something about a pheasant girl, which turned out to be Aurora, which, it turns out, the stranger that Aurora met was actually Prince Philip, which uh, they tried to rush in to rescue him, or warn him to, uh, about Maleficent, but, too late. Maleficent and his minions came in with an ambush and captured Prince Philip to it. His monstrous lair. Woohoo. But with that being said, the fairies decide you know, with no choice but to save Prince Philip. So with that being said, they went to Maleficent's lair. While Maleficent came in to check on his prisoner, she saw or saw the future of Prince Philip that uh, after a hundred years they would release Prince Philip and so that way they could restore Aurora. That's pretty not fair, but luckily enough, right after Maleficent left, the fairies came in to uh, get Prince Philip out of there and uh, knows how to defeat her, which they showed him the Shield of Honor and the Sword of Truth, which Prince Philip uh, used to uh, help his escape against Maleficent, and it was a pretty great one until... Maleficent saw that Prince Philip escaped and tried to uh, get to Aurora and save her, but Maleficent tried everything. She sent on a bunch of thick and spiky thorns on the ground, which uh, could prevent Prince Philip to uh, gain to her. But luckily enough, he was swinging around his sword to uh, cut through the vines, which Maleficent had no choice but to uh, finish this off by turning into... A giant fire-breathing dragon. Oh man, was Prince Philip going to back off? Nope, he decided to fight. Okay, now I know usually that and during the storybooks that uh, a prince always fights off a dragon with uh, a deep voice, but this one's different. That battle between him and Maleficent was actually pre pretty epic though, and then in the end, the fairies helped out Prince Philip to uh, cast a final spell, and then he threw the sword right in Maleficent's heart, which caused her to fell 
come down and burn to death. Ooh. Even though for a Disney movie, that was pretty, uh, one of the most brutal deaths ever. But sometimes villains do deserve to have deaths, though. But yeah. And then right after that, Prince Philip um, came out to the tower and found Aurora. And then... True Love's first kiss, Aurora was finally awakened. <laughs> yes. And then... Everyone was awake and they saw that Aurora has been awakened and in return along with his handsome prince, Prince Philip, and then it ended with a grateful dance. Yep, and that's happily ever after. Oh man, that was actually really good. I'm glad I did this movie review. <laughs> okay, now before the outro, here's some new announcements. The vo a very last as movie review will be coming soon d next month on December, which will be a really great surprise. But before the uh, last one, I'm going to do a recap, which uh, features just all the movie review news I did to uh, help you remind you what was the list of the uh, season two movie review news. <laughs> so yeah, make sure you check that out real soon, and don't forget. Two new episodes of uh, The Adventures of Brick Dragon Hero Season 2 will also be coming real soon. So make sure you can check that out by subscribing to this channel. Oh wait, I'm not done. Alright, I'll see you next time. Hey, it's me, BDH, but I'm also known as the Brick Dragon Hero. That video was great, huh, Applex? You said it, BBJ. And if you want to see more of the Brick Dragon Hero videos, all you gotta do is... Subscribe! Follow Brick Dragon Hero on Instagram. Like for this video. Share this with your friends. And comment down below what you think of that video. And don't forget to check out the last video. So thanks for watching, and have a brick day! Whoosh.